uh, many will tend to go in uh, by millions or thousands. Um, so we must follow the right hand of God. He said we will be saved by our right hand. And in that revelation, we must understand that God will dictate everything that we need to do to be able to stay cleansed and be able to stay righteous in him. Amen. We must not forget the instructions that he's given us when he give us a powerful prophet to be able to give us and deliver messages to us. That's why it's important for us to come to the church. Amen. Amen. If you are loose like a wild animal and you running wild, you have no instructions, you have no wisdom, no knowledge, and no understanding, mm -hmm. then what is your duty? What are you supposed to do in God? You have a duty in God. Mm -hmm. And if you are running wild and you don't know what your duty is, then you are a wild animal. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. And God says, brute beast, <laughs> supposed to be caught and destroyed. Amen. So what I'm saying is, is he has given us everything that we're supposed to have to be able to follow the righteousness of God. I'm not talking about exceeding the righteousness of God, but being able to walk in his light. Amen. We, we, I think about it all the time. I think about how important it is for us to be able to dwell in the house of the Lord. To be able to further his cause. Mm -hmm. Not for our purpose. Mm -hmm. But for his purpose. But, but you know the funny thing about it is. We can go to work on time. Mm -hmm. We can go to our little parties and clubs on time. Mm -hmm. It's a baby shower or something going on. Oh we ain't going to be late. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. You know all these things we want to do. But when it comes to God. And they want to say God is slack. Mm -hmm. No I think we slack. We the ones that's, you know, that's not following instructions. We can't get where we need to be at on time. We treat God like, okay, we just going to do what we want to do and not worry about what he got for us to do. Well, see, God said he got places for people like that. Because we have a job here like we're going to have in heaven. But if you're going to operate his job here, why would he trust you in heaven to operate something when you can't even operate in here? <laughs> you know, so it ain't just the fact that we are born and destined to go to work and just make money and buy cars and clothes and furniture. That is not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to follow instructions and obey our Father so He can teach us how to be righteous under His eyes. And it don't matter what you think when, you, when you're looking at someone else because that person can truly be doing everything that God want them to do because they are following the instructions of God. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that come to church is, is following instructions and they're doing what they're supposed to do. Many people come to church for the wrong reason. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But they don't come to church to follow the instructions of God. <coughs> you know, so this is why the Lord brought the message for his, one of his prophets was Balaam. You know, Balaam was supposed to be able to go out and teach Balak what he need to do for Israel and what he need to stay away from. It. Who's blessed and who ain't blessed. Amen. What's going to get it done for us here in this earth and this time is to be able to accept the gifts God then gave us. Amen. Put away that flushiness. Yes, Lord. Because what makes you think if God handled his prophet like that, he ain't going to handle us like that. Amen. We ain't no different. You might think your time is up, but it's not. If you're still living, you have time. That means God has already put something predestined in your life to help you. Yes. But it's up to you to receive it and move on with it. Let's go to numbers, everybody. Now, our last finishing touches was last week. We was in Numbers, chapter 22, verse 35. Now, we know our prophet Balaam was giving instructions to Balak. From God. But did he follow the instructions? No. Nope. Amen. He did not follow the instructions. So God sent him an angel.
to be able to dictate his path. Did he? Did he not? Amen. Now, our last touches in uh, Numbers 22:35. Then the angel of the Lord said to Bel, "Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you, that you shall speak." So Bel went with the princess of Balak. <clears throat> now, at this point, I like to take and look at us as a people that we haven't come that far to be the first, second, and third generation of the Most High God. Because if we have, trust me, with all the gifts God has given us, trust me, things will be a lot different than what they are now. So what I'm trying to tell you, God kept his promise. He did not divert from his promise. He did everything he said he was going to do. He gave us the tools we need. He gave us the people that he put in front of us. God didn't tell a lie. God did everything. And all you have to do is look around. This generation is a blessed generation. I don't care how you look at it. You got everything you need and more. Plus what God said he was going to do for this generation. Amen. Amen. The best gift he said I'm going to give man is my Bible so he can follow my instructions and my pastors and my preachers will be able to get into that word and revelate to them so they'll understand what I'm trying to say to them. But see, even still when God speaks to people, a lot of times the speaking that we do is forced from us, not correct, because we don't want to follow and what I mean by that is forced is we are hard to be able to take instructions. We, we get upset. We get mad. We don't want to listen. We don't want to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. God only requires but a little of us. Amen. A little of us. Mm -hmm. But we give so much to the flushiness of this world. Yes. And we do. Man, I see, the funny thing about it is, if we have a certain time that we're supposed to be at a certain place for God, and we have a certain time we're supposed to be at a certain place to make some money, the first thing they're going to push God in the back. Mm -hmm. Now, understand, God is the one that's providing that. Amen. He's providing your location. He's providing that job. He's providing that person that's going to hand down a gift to you to be able to make mm -hmm. the proceeds for his kingdom. Now, what happened with Balak and Balaam? And from last week, we know that Balak is trying to get Balaam to bless Moab and curse Israel. Now, we know that. But what is God trying to do? What is his point between Balaam and Balak and Israel? Now, remember, Israel is a blessed generation. God said it. Amen. He said these people are blessed. Amen? Amen. If we go to 22, uh, Numbers chapter 22, verse 12, the Lord says, And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are what? Blessed. Blessed. Now, God told him that for a reason. But see, remember, y'all, Balaam still can dictate under his own power after God gave him instructions because God is not going to take him and treat him like a robot. But he's looking for him to have the common sense and the knowledge that he installed to him to be able to do right. Mm -hmm. Under the powers of God. He is a prophet. Yes. Yeah. And if we go to <clears throat> the chapter where Balak is trying to tell Balaam what he expects and what he wants from him. But God have already delivered that. Amen? Amen. Everybody go to Numbers 22, 12. Amen. Now, what we, what we have is, is many things that we have, we have thought in our life that was right. And we thought we was doing it according to the best for our purpose. But what about
about God's purpose? What about his purpose? What about what he wants? But you know what? We're miserable because we choose to be miserable. Yes. We upset, we angry because we choose to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not because we want to be. Your mind is operated totally solely under your power. Yes. God yes. owns it, but it's under your power. Yes. You can receive it how you want to receive it. Everything happening to you ain't bad is what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's how you perceive it and how you make it. Amen. So when I think about it, I think about all the stuff that happened to us, the stumbling blocks that come before us. Some of us can't deal with it because the fact that we let it overtake us. Amen. It's the same thing that Balaam did with the donkey. Now why are you answering the donkey when you should be answering God? Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, you should be dealing with God. Why are you dealing with a donkey? Amen. So God said, you want to be a fool? I'm going to show you, I'm going to make that donkey talk back to you so I can show you how much of a fool you are. Many of us do it. Not understanding the power was coming straight from the most high God. He said, hey, listen to me, not a donkey. If your car driving crooked, it ain't right. Apparently it needs a shop. Something is wrong, right? Amen. Well, you're going to take it to a shop. Mm -hmm. So his, his donkey is going off course. It's not acting right. Who owned that donkey? God. God. You're going to talk to God. Oh, most high God, what have I done? This thing ain't working right. I'm working for you, but the donkey is giving me resistance, so apparently something is wrong. Let me talk to you. Amen. Amen. But what I say to y'all guys, I say today is, are we going to be able to understand the message that God is trying to tell us, or are we just going to blank it out? Or are we just going to blank it out? Let's go to Numbers 23, 27, everybody. Then Balak said to Baal, please come. I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. He's still trying to Amen. get, <laughs> he's still trying to get Balaam to bless and curse. Now see, what God is trying to do is make sure and watch over to see if Balaam is doing what he's supposed to do. Now, according to our eyes, with the message we received, it seemed like he's doing right. According to some of the messages that he have said to he have said to uh, Balak about how his interest is in God. He has made it very clear that he is so totally under God's power. Amen? Amen. So, uh, Sister Yolanda, or Brother Roger, Amen. go to 2311 and read that. 2311. Then Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and look, you have blessed them. Okay, so see, Balak is upset because he's trying to find out what Balaam is doing. What is he doing? Brother Deacon, 12. Amen. So he answered and said, Most must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my in my mouth. Okay. So see, even at that point. He's letting them know, hey, I'm doing the Lord's work. Amen. God is telling me what to do, and I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Brother Roger. Next verse. 13. Then Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only the outer part of them, and shall not see them all. Curse them for me from there. See, so at this point, He's still trying to force Balaam to curse Israel. And see, God is standing back trying to find out what is going on at this point. You know, I mean, he, he's, God is like, hey, I want to see what Balaam is doing. And see, Balaam seems Balaam seem to be doing what he's supposed to do according to our eyes. But according to God's eyes, something is terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we should be able to operate 
so totally under the powers of God and not able to be uh, to be perpetrated Amen. in a way. And what I mean by that is be able to be controlled by any other power but God. Your job ain't supposed to control you. Amen. 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 You're supposed to know when you're going in there, you're going in there to serve a purpose and not purpose only. Amen. Amen. But God has to come first, even in your job. Amen. Amen. Your tardiness that you have in God, believe me, should not exceed the tardiness. I mean, the tardiness that you have in your job should not exceed the tardiness in God. It, God should be more important in that job Amen. at Amen. all times because God is the one that delivered that to you. And the reason why I'm saying <coughs> I'm putting this job in there because Bell has a what? A job yeah. to do, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to, uh, I want everybody to read this together because I want us to, we're going to drop back a couple of spaces here. And uh, I want us to read this, chapter 22, verse 38. 22, 38, everybody. Y'all ready? Read. And Balaam said to Balak, is y'all lost? And Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have, I have come, come to you now. now have, have I have any power, power at all to say <coughs> anything the word, the word that, that God, God puts in my mouth, uh -huh. that I must speak. speak. Now, according to it, he still is telling Balak his powers under God. Is he not? Mm -hmm. He's telling him he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. But is he truly doing what he's supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. he's, his words out of his mouth seems to be correct, right? We, we truly want to know if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. So what we're going to do, let's come on down to Numbers 24, 11. Now, therefore, flee to your place, I said. I will greatly honor you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from honor. This is what Balak has said to Balaam. But let me ask you this question. Was he really, was he fooling him? Or was he speaking the right words? Remember y'all in God. I want y'all to remember something. This is very important. Y'all got to understand something in here. Everybody have a job. Mm -hmm. You don't even understand. Balak had a job. His job was to what? Work what he was doing. He was doing his job. You heard what he told Bill? Everybody, let's read it together. Amen. Numbers 24, 11. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. Amen. Read. Now, therefore, flee to your place. I said, I would greatly honor you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from honor. So, according to Balak, Balaam is supposed to curse Israel. And God has kept them back because he didn't do it. So when I ask you in your eyes, who was right, Balaam or Balak? Now we heard everything that God was saying, so are we confused? Or the Spirit has not come in and convict? See, this is what I love. I love when we have controversy. Because only the strong will survive in this point. Because God will give you the delusions to believe the lie. Amen. Just so he can test you to make sure you're right. You know what I say? Stick to the word of God. That's what I say. I say stick to the word of God. I mean, it's clear to the fact, was he right or was he wrong? Now, God is going to use Balaam in power. Remember, a prophet is only to be able to use to speak the words that God want him to speak. Amen. And God will use him for that. He's going to do that. That's their job, to be able to be used in the body of Christ. Now, he's going to speak all these things. He's going to tell Balak what is going to happen in the latter days to his people. For Moab, what's going to happen to your people versus Israel? Now, even though God is still using him, don't mean he's still moving in the sight of God. Amen. Now, remember, he carried him to many high places. Many high places he carried him to. Balak carried Balaam to to be able to curse Israel. He had to have seven donkeys, I mean seven rams. He had to have these, these animals to be able to curse.
to be able to get God to come to him. Well, when you offer sacrifices, God comes. So, therefore, who was speaking the right words? Who was doing their job? Was, did Balak know something that Balaam didn't know? Even though that Balaam is the, the actual prophet of God? Or was Balaam supposed to really cheat, teach Moab what they supposed to do and how they supposed to live? And did he do that or not? So therefore, they end up coming to a confusion. And the last word was spoke to them would be in chapter 24, 25. So Balaam rose and departed and returned to his place. Balak also went his way. Now, I miss, I skipped a lot of stuff on purpose. The reason why I did, because we don't have enough time to fill it all in. Because we probably going to be here for a while bouncing back. But this is important. What I want to show you is both of them flee. They went their own separate ways, right? Mm -hmm. Apparently, something went terribly wrong. And it's in 25.1. The word of God says, Now Israel remained in Arcacia Grove, and the people began to commit holotry with the women of Moab. Mm -hmm. you, you see? Somebody is on their way down at this point. Somebody is on their way down because this could have been prevented. But it wasn't prevented. Two, they invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. This is not what God wanted. Balaam had a job to do. It's the same thing when God chose Jonah to go to that great city and save them people. Speak the word of God. He did what he was supposed to do. What happened to Balaam? We already know we have a problem at this point, amen? Amen. We have a serious problem. And the reason why we do have a problem is because somebody 